Hello and welcome, my City Biz listeners. My name is Bridget Hom, and I am your host, where we get to interview some incredible individuals who are impacting lives. And today, I'm so excited to share this amazing guest with you. Tony, you founded a humanitarian nonprofit called Noesis, and you recently launched a best-selling book on Amazon and Audible called The Human Injury, A Species in Crisis. So we would love to hear more about your book and that process. Can you tell us about the story behind, first, tell us about finding, founding your nonprofit, Noesis, and then let's get into your book. Welcome. First of all, thank you for having me. You talked about amazing people. Like I was, who came in? <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, you know, this group is five years old. Uh, I created a, non, a 501c3 nonprofit um, for the purpose of of human sustainability. That's that's a lot in two words, and we'll, you'll understand what that means. But this group was created five years ago. The book is new. Um, that's because I never intended a book. I actually intended and still intend an actionable group um, because only actionable humans are capable of greatness. Uh, we need to, you know, the human species is, I'm going to say something that I couldn't say 10 years ago, but that I can say today and nobody will, and nobody will have any problem with it. And that is that humanity is experiencing an existential crisis. Um, we've arrived to a place that feels unsafe and certainly less promising than we were taught to expect. Um, so five years ago, I came out of retirement. Um, we joked earlier, like, who chooses to do this? Which is my way of saying that there is no agenda other than to help. I'm here to help because um, you know, humanity is in a place that, uh, we feel like we're slipping and I'm afraid that we are, and that I can show that, but we are here to arrest at the very end, at the end of it, we're here to arrest human degradation, no less. Absolutely. Wow. That's so that's really the inspiration that's backing your nonprofit, correct? Um, most certainly. And if people say to me, wait a minute, let me get this straight. You're here to arrest human degradation. This is my answer. I most certainly am. That's exactly what I intend to do. So tell us a little bit about that, that story. So what really prompted you to, to launch this nonprofit and, and, you know, tell us a little bit about its core mission. I know you've touched on it, but really share, share that with the people listening right now. Okay, the core mission is to, uh, is uh, a couple of major things. All everybody will be will understand them. We are here to quantify the immensity of evolutionary weight on modern day behavior. We think that when we arrive in our mother's arms, we're a blank slate. We hear this a lot. I'm afraid that I can't concur. Um, there are one hundred thousand generations of prior humans before us wrapped around our bones when we arrive in our mother's arms. Um, so here we are in the present day, uh, in our present moment, uh, this iteration of hum humanity is trying to find sustainability. And it's like a metaphorical molehill trying to move aside Mount Everest of, uh, of evolutionary drama inside all of us. I mean, who do we think we are? What are we asking of ourselves? So all of these things are knowable and understandable now. We have the evolutionary data to understand ourselves, and we're the first generation of humans that do. Yes, wow. We, we, nobody thinks about these things, but we're the first generation of humans that can actually determine where we came from and why we do what we do. That's it. That's huge in terms of evolution, isn't it? Um, yeah. And also, uh, I said arrest human degradation, uh, but there's also a fourth thing. There's a fourth banner. We can't get together politically. Of course not. We can't do it religiously. Please. You know, we're, we're not ready for this. Culturally, we can't do it. 
aha, here comes a fourth banner under which we can unite. And history shows that humans unite under common enemies. And that is the mortality of our species is on the horizon. It's visible. And when that's no longer a stretch, that is a fourth banner under which we can unite now, today. I love what you just said, because in all the cultural shifts that we're experiencing right now, yes, it seems like we're constantly at odds with each other. And I love how you talk about the evolutionary process of that fourth pillar where, yes, we can all align with this common enemy of mortality. And I think that's absolutely incredible and profound insight. Uh, do you Did you incorporate this into your book? It's all... Listen, as much science and socio-mathematics that is in this book, there's three times the amount of empathy. You know, the human beings, we are a species that needs to forgive itself. I mean, we are a, we're a self-loathing species. We think we've been bad boys and girls, haven't we? The fact is that uh, we're... we're it overmatched by the immensity of our own existence, if you will. Uh, we are we are trying to achieve sustainability while I call it evolutionary baggage. Imagine somebody running through the airport with nine bags. And you're going to say, like, you got too much baggage. Well, we've got a lot of evolutionary baggage and we can shed it if we understand it. And, and that's a beautiful thing. It always starts with understanding. Honestly, when you were talking about nine bags and lots of baggage, I was th also thinking, man, running through the airport with my three boys is the same way. <laughs> you just want to drop some of it off. But I'm curious, I want to kind of take it back to, you know, the business ownership as well, because you are running a nonprofit right now um, at, with Noesis. And along with the mission and the core values and perpetuating that in a culture that desperately needs this, you know, to, to know more about the human injury and how to overcome this crisis, you know, what are the most significant challenges you faced in running a nonprofit and how have you overcome them? Um, well, first of all, is certainly rejection. Um, if, if we're not understood, human beings keep at bay what they don't understand until they understand it and then they'll let it in. So if you're going to do what we do, you you need to arrive at the place as quickly as possible where we are a friend. Um, you know, we are a friend. Um, we're talking about disallowing the human species to commit itself to an irreversible reality uh, where our children and their unborn would know an existential hell on earth. I mean, it, I, I, I don't want my children to skin their knee, let alone discover that, that, that we may have clocked out of the building, that they're, that they're forced to, now they got to leave the building that we clocked out of. Yes. And, and we all want better for more and better for our children. Right. And so do you, in, in your book, is this something that you talk about the solutions to overcoming these common enemies and overcoming the, you know, getting rid of the baggage, the years of baggage of evolution that we're all carrying. Do you speak, speak to that in your book? I have to. Um, it, 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 people think that describing, people think that we're the extinction guys. No, we're the non-extinction guys. Um, we uh, we want to warn, we want to warn of, of what's a very insidious thing. Extinction summons the finality of extinction, like oh, the lights are out. No, no. There's a period of that precedes all extinction events. And there have been 5 billion. I mean, come on, uh, this is very real. But the, the period that precedes uh, finality where the earth is fallen silent is a period called commitment. It's the mathematical point past which we can't recover no matter how many times, how many lies we tell ourselves, no matter how many rationalizations intrude. It's a mathematical point that if reached by our actions or our, or our inactions, it will only be knowable in retrospect. And this bad boys and girls, no, human beings are gravely injured. The human injury occurred when we crossed over from collaborate or die to 
acquisition. Um, when we uh, stationary cultures took up acquisition, greater beings and lesser beings were created for the first time. The lesser being ha has no idea how to be lesser in their DNA. This is a DNA-based insult. We don't do theory here. So every stationary empire ever to exist in the last 10,000 years has been toppled by the very models of perpetual conflict that we see all around us. Um, you know, we'll, here we are trying to control climate change, um, uh, disruptive technologies, nuclear, pandemic. Uh, there is one inconvenience. None of those four things ever disassembled a previous human culture. The only two words on each tombstone was perpetual conflict. So here we are in perpetual conflict, except for one thing, humans are not natural enemies. That's brilliant. And I think that honing in on humans are not natural enemies is one of the reasons, you know, your book has skyrocketed, you know, in a relatively short time, you have created momentum with a community of over 16,000 on Facebook. Uh, and I was just curious, can you share a particularly heartwarming or inspiring moment from your work with Noesis that underscores the positive impact your organization has had on individuals or communities? Uh, we, we, I'm, I, I had to say, I don't know how to say this. I, we had to cap it at 16,000 because, because, because people were seeing a, a, an island of pure intrinsic truth in a desert of, of, you know, where's all this going? Uh, we, you know, we, uh, we can explain every single thing that we do today. We'll actually have an evolutionary trigger that can now be pinpointed. So let me give you an example. Um, all of our, all of our models, we see gossip shows and gossip newspapers. We're nitpicking at everybody. Well, if we know what evolution tells us that we are channeling an ancient relic, and that is the search for negative information that used to keep our groups alive. The bad news kept us alive, but all those enemies are long dead. But what didn't die was our, it, what happens in areas of the mind not available to us. We're still looking for ancient enemies that are long dead. And, and because of that, we are misinterpreting our environments. A hundred percent. You know, Tony, I think you'll, I think you'll love this quote. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's by Aristotle and it's the mark of an educated mind is the ability to entertain a thought without accepting it. <clears throat> oh, oh my, uh, listen, um, it was terrific that you said that. What a segue. I evoke Carl Sagan a lot. Um, and, and what I, it's more closer to your idea than you think. Carl Sagan was a fatherly man a very fatherly person. He allowed us to, to consider things like infinity and the vast nature of our universe in safety. There was a safety about him. Um, we human beings need to summon the courage to view ourselves with an unflinching, unblinking lens. We need to identify our many delusions and we need to uh, retire them because um, we are acting unnaturally relative to 100,000 years of collaborate, affiliate, cooperate, help what is helpless um, to assist and to be assisted. We crave appreciation. Only a little bit of it can take us to a new level. So true. You know, I say self-awareness, self-direction, and then manifestation of something more and better and thinking about our culture in a way where it's a reflection of what we truly want to be, right? Yes. And I, in the interest of t the time we have, let me explain. I, the book is called The Human Injury. It's not called The Human Scourge. It's not called The Human Joke. 
It's not called the human um, plague. It's called the human injury. Why? Because when we, we were a smashing success, when we arrived at all points in the, on the globe 10 to 15,000 years ago, we were a masterpiece. I mean, for a million years, we had no problems. Then we settled down into larger groups unnatural hierarchies intruded and then we, we, we lesser beings appeared on earth and then we broke down in extremely precise fashion after that and it was the precision that drew me in the precision of it what we we're calling a complex no our failures all look the same so it, it it is comforting here's why because it's social math rather than he said, she said, or blame, blame, rejection. Now, I got a question for you. Who accepts, who accepts our blame? Anyone you know? Blame's a threat. Blame's a threat to the human mind. So what we did was um, uh, we have models of blame and blame rejection. Every day we read a, read a newspaper. It's a blame, blame, rejection sheet. So we monetized our executioner, but we didn't know. We didn't know. No, no, we didn't. We couldn't deduce our origin until 173 years ago when Charles Darwin wrote on the origin of species. And I need to say this, the Quran, the Bible, and on the origin of species are the three most widely read books in the world. This means that we're now ready not only to believe, but to know. What we have, if we don't know, our beliefs won't save us. That we can stay alive. I got a great idea. What do you think? Let's let's survive ourselves in order to expand on our individual beliefs, because those help us to reach the finish line of our lives. Hold on to your beliefs. That's profound. And hey, you know, there's there's many people who believe they could never write a book, Tony. So how what would you say to individuals who have dreamed of writing a book and didn't know all you didn't know all of this was within you, right? When, until you started writing, wouldn't you say? It was it was like a you had to get it out at some point. Um that it was coming out of every pore on my body. I mean, it, I think people said, do me a favor and write a book so you can, so we can get you to like, stop talking. And anyways, I never had a, I never had a thought I didn't share. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm I make fun of myself all the time. Look, um, it, writing a book here, here's the thing. We, here's what most of our problem was. And here was mine. Where do I start? Where do I start? It's like a, this might be a guy thing, but remember, we were told to clean our rooms when we were kids and it got messier and messier. And finally, we were like, I don't even know where to start. So the idea is what I'm telling people to do is get someone else to take all of your material, organize it into something that has a logical flow. And then it's easy. Start writing about that's something that I can bring to this process because I had great editors. I had a wonderful editor named Gretchen who just got it. And she said, I think you should put it in this order. And I was like, now I can start writing. Simplified the process. So your tip to anyone on entrepreneur or business owner or, or person who wants to make an impact is Find someone who can structure all of your ideas and your thoughts and put it in a way where you can see that it's manageable. You can do this. You can complete this project and hire a good editor. Is that right? Yeah. Like, un, like, un, like plow the road. They, they'll, they'll plow, you know, we plow our roads before we drive them. So get somebody to plow the road, meaning like that you, now you can, you have a, some, you can now navigate the road. And that means that somebody has put, your thoughts and all of your material into its proper place. And that's what a great editor does. So get a great editor and then start writing. It'll flow right out of you like water. So true. And so question, what's what's next for Noesis? 
Um, I'm going to be serious here. Um, uh, I put everything I had into this. Uh, every uh, there is a standard of quality here that is immovable, and it is it's hard. It is seamless. We do not go below it. We have 50 videos. All of them are arguments rather than lectures. We don't lecture anyone. Human beings aren't going to get sit still to be lectured, but we will sit still for an, for an explanation. So we're professional explainers. Um, we, we crossed over to acquisitive behavior. We created lesser beings in a financial meritocracy. It was the financial meritocracy that began to fail in a very, like a clock-like fashion, which is what, which is what drove me to something like precision means that there's a constant. Let me get busy finding it. Well, that's stationary culture. We, we don't, we go into acquisition, we diminish others and it starts, it goes bad from there. And I might add, it goes bad quickly and catastrophically. There hasn't been a there, there hasn't been a stationary human culture that's ever survived where lesser beings were created. So it sounds like Noesis brings not only the awareness and the impact, but really trying to create a cultural shift where people are able to have constructive arguments for the sake of creating a culture that can actually live well and of uh, and not only avoid co- not avoid conflict, but but make something better out of that and stop repeating the mistakes of the past and evolution. Well, if, yes, of course. And here's something else that's simple. If we were guidance counselors at a high school and somebody came in who was acting out, they were late all the time. They were getting into fights. Uh, they were withdrawing. We would, we would stop asking questions of them and we would start asking questions like, what's going on here? And we would find out maybe there's a divorce going on. And that would be our aha moment. Like this person's injured. Okay. It pertains to an entire human species. We were swept along into what we never chose, but it was no one's fault. We became acquisitive beings and self-interest and collaboration repel. They repel. So this is knowable and it's nobody's fault. We swing the entire narrative over to we've been bad boys and girls. No, no, we're broken. We don't scold a lost child. You know, that that's empathy. I agree. Empathy and and embracing so many gold nuggets that you've shared today with with all of our listeners. I I mean, if you you have to get Tony's book, The Human Injury, A Species in Crisis, to understand more, um, how can people reach you? How can they get your book? Um, I talked about the immensity of material, noesisproject.com. I just started filming videos about five years ago and I just put it out there. You know, I, I just divorced myself from all the fear. I divorced myself from all the reactive reaction, 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 and I became an observer. Um, I, I recommend it. Become an observer for a couple of days. Don't react to anybody and observe and you'll see the patterns. And when I saw the patterns, patterns are mathematical by their nature. So that means there was a constant and I found that constant and it's in the book and people are seeing something like they've never seen anything like it, which is the only thing I'll ever say about my book. They've never seen anything like it. Plus I'm a wise guy. I have a a sense of humor and I try to infuse that into the book. Evolutionary levity. Well, and I love that. I think the most intelligent species are, are, have a sense of humor. You know, Tony, you'll like this phrase. I always say to people, observe, don't absorb. And your relationships and your life will get better. Um, listen, I, I, let me say something. My kids always say this. I say, I have the sense of humor of a 10 year old. Um, I, I, I truly do. And, and uh, I've never, ever, I'll never let it go. And then somebody sent me uh, a, a something they found, it was a quotation that said, a true philosopher has the heart of a child. 
Um, and I thought to myself, I just, I just, I explained the whole thing. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely, uh, I'm extremely have it like a, a ridiculously amateur sense of humor and I like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, we, we like that. I think that's never, never something that changes with age. You know, we can always appreciate a good sense of humor, but Tony, I, I want to, I want to ask you, and this is probably completely off script, but if you were to leave the people who are watching and listening with one gold nugget, something that you want them to take away from our time together today, or an inspirational quote, something, what would you leave them with? Okay. Human beings are, the more we learn about our universe every day, we learn more about our universe in one week than we learned in the 20th century. We are very likely the rarest, most precious species in the galaxy. The more we know about ourselves, we make a Monet look like a stick figure. Okay. So when we, all of a sudden the people laying in the streets, the forgotten ones, suddenly I just promoted them to the most rare and precious species in the galaxy. Cosmic rarity we teach here. We value rarity, but not our own. And that needs to stop. We need to we need to summon, if we can start liking ourselves, we'll preserve ourselves, but we don't like ourselves for all the wrong reasons. Agreed. So that was brilliant. Start liking ourselves to preserve ourselves. <laughs> start, let's start with like, because when somebody says, love yourself, I'm, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Um, but I, I know what like, I like myself as a uh, human species doesn't like itself or other we wouldn't, or else we wouldn't be holding guns to one another's heads. And, and you've just said so many brilliant things. And I, I think we should leave people with that. Start to step into liking and loving yourself and others around you and keep it simple first and foremost <laughs> before anything else. Well, we're flesh and blood. If we don't do what I just said, then the lights will go out one day and they won't come back on. And I am here to make sure that never, ever happens. And it doesn't have to. Exactly. And that's, you know, and that's, that's something that we all need to know. So if we want to find out more about you, noesisproject.com. Yes. And the, the human injury is available um, in hardback. It's available softback. It's audible. I, I had the pleasure of reading my own book. It was wonderful. They, they said, well, you have the audio uh, quality in your voice. That's yet to be seen. Uh, but it was wonderful to read it. And uh, also, noesisproject.com, we've got 50 videos. They're all arguments. They're not just me going on and on. I'm making an argument why human sustainability is in trouble and why it doesn't have to be. Exactly. Well, beautiful. Thank you, Tony. And I believe anyone who's listening right now who wants to elevate their thinking, being and doing needs to check that out and listen to these arguments so that we could all focus on personal development because that's what we're going to unite the entire globe under the banner of species self-preservation while asking for nothing in the short term. That was, that was beautifully said. Let's leave people with that. Thank you, Tony, for joining me today. Tony Wall, everyone. And I'm Bridget Hom, uh, City Biz, and we'll see you soon.